come to worship and magnify the Lord and give them praise. I'm looking forward to seeing what the Lord is going to do here tonight in this service. And I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule and camp meeting and coming to show these young people that you appreciate them and love them and care for them. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the Lord is going to do in the service here tonight. Amen. I know he's able to do something great and glorious. We're going to start off with a song, and then we're going to come and do some awards, and then we're going to have prayer. But we've come to worship the Lord. Let's worship the Lord with the praise team. from your heart tonight. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. And I love your Your goodness is running out. 
Let's sing that chorus one more time tonight. All my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing. Aren't you glad that he's been faithful? Has he been faithful to anybody in this room tonight? I said, has the Lord been faithful to anybody in the room tonight? He's a faithful God. And I thank God for that. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We have some awards we want to give out real quick. And we're going to go back into worship. We are so thankful for this year. Uh, for our National Youth Department. We've had such a wonderful year at camp. We had close to 400 kids at camp this year. And the Lord has blessed us. The Lord has uh, been favorable to us. We've done a lot of remodeling, a lot of uh, things at the campgrounds. And this year we've raised over $150,000 for the National Youth Department. And I praise God for that. We have individuals given, we have churches given, other churches that are outside of our organization that has given, and we appreciate all of them that has done that, and we're looking for a better year this year. But we have our top 15 uh, givers uh, for the National Youth Department for the Church of God Mountain Assembly, and I know some are not here, some have uh, went home, some are not uh not coming tonight, but we still want to recognize them, and maybe if they're in the place, we can make sure they give them. We had a tie for 15th place of the YWC, and $1,000 given for both of them, and the one is Eastern Road Church of God, Pastor Farron Cole. Is Pastor Farron Cole here? I don't think he's here, but we want to recognize him. Also 15th place, $1,000 given, and they are stuck in traffic on their way. But that is uh, Pastor Chaz Bowes with the V-Life Church from Toledo with $1,000. We appreciate them. Number 14 is uh, the Fondy, Kentucky Church. And uh, Pastor uh, Cecil Johnson's here. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Uh, 14 with $1,110. We appreciate that. 13th place. If you can just stay up here real quick, 13th place is Middlesboro, Kentucky. Pastor Mike Paget with $1,320. We appreciate the Middlesboro CGMA. Amen. 12th place is the Mountain Ash, Kentucky, $1,550. Pastor Euless Cox. Bring it to him, he said. We'll bring it to him. He preached so hard Tuesday morning, we're going to bring it to him. We appreciate that, Pastor Euless, for your dedication and work to our youth camp uh, for the, I think that was 12th place. 11th place is the Tabernacle Church in Jellico, Tennessee with $1,560. Let's give them a hand, Pastor Scott Landis. Pastor Scott Landis, he's here. There he is. Amen. We appreciate him. And then we got uh, number 10 is... Number 10, right? Number 10, yes. Number 10, yeah, 10th place. Is the uh, Crossroad Church in Piqua, Ohio. I don't think they're here, but Pastor Joe. Is Pastor Joe here? Can you get that for him? Pastor Joe. I appreciate that. And that was $1,676. The North Town Church is number nine. Pastor Tim Barty. Our new bishop, let's give him a hand as he comes. $1,700. Yeah, we appreciate that so much. And then the next place is uh, the Newcastle uh, Church. Pastor Mike Winner with $1,770. 
Abundant Life Church. Amen. Seventh place goes to the Hill Church, Pastor Jeremy Walden, with $1,854 to the youth department. Amen. Pastor uh, will do that, all right. Number six with $2,000 is the New Horizon Troy, Pastor Joe Hill. He's already up here. Let's give them a hand with $2,000. I seen Pastor Chaz Bowes walk in. Come up here and get your plaque. Come on, Pastor Chaz. Let's give Pastor Chaz a hand. The V Life Church, now Compassion Church. And we appreciate that. Stand up here. He finally got one. That's right. Number five is Ferguson, Kentucky. Pastor New Life Church, Pastor Doug Walden with $2,500. $2,500. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Fourth place is the Living Waters Church of Old Fort, North Carolina with $3,000 given. Amen. We appreciate Pastor Keith Jameson. Brother Masson Gill here. I didn't see if he's here. I don't think he's here either. Okay. But that is fourth place. Third place is the Wabash Chapel, the Remnant Church. Pastor Mike Moore with $3,900. $3,900. Amen. We appreciate him so much. Sergeant. And then second place with $5,600 is the Living Waters Fellowship in Georgetown, Kentucky. Pastor Daryl Gauntz with $5,600. Here comes Donnie to receive that. Amen. And number one with $6,997 is the Aspenwall Church. Where's Pastor Jalen? Come up and get that. And number one, let's give them a hand. We appreciate them. Let's get a picture. If you can scoot in, scoot in. Let's get a picture real quick. Amen. Got it. Thank you so much. Let's give all these wonderful churches and all the ones that give. We appreciate you. We got three more awards here that we want to give out. Is the highest attendance to camps uh, this year and to the uh, kids camp. The highest attendance to kids camp is the Living Church of Five Mile, Pastor Don White. Where's Pastor Don White at? Is he here? There he is. Highest attendance to kids camp. Man, they brought a group of kids at camp. They kept coming. They kept coming. I said, is this all? They said, no, there's more coming. <laughs> we appreciate that. Stay up here. We got another one. Our uh, teen camp this year. We had three camps this year. Um, and uh, we had, like I said, three camps. We just moved the ages differently. But had uh, three camps there. And for the highest teen camp is Pastor Doug Walden in the New Life Church. Let's give him a hand for the highest attendance to teen camp this year and then for our young adult camp the highest attendance to our young adult camp was the V-Life Church with Pastor Chaz Bowes Amen That's right The Bible says to give honor where honor is due. Patrick, I want you to stay right there. Where's Katie? Is Katie here? Where's Katie? Come on up here, Katie. Pastor Patrick was our assistant national youth director, and he worked so well with us. We, we were a good team, I'm telling you. We're good friends, and I appreciate him so much. And this is his lovely wife, Katie. And uh, they are, uh, he, nobody kicked him out. He declined the nomination because of some ministry things that he's going to be doing. But I appreciate his work and dedication, not just this year. But see, it's important to me that the people that love the camp continue to go to camp, continue to be there, and continue to support it. And I appreciate their love and their dedication to the Church of God Mountain Assembly campgrounds. I love them with all my heart and their family to me. And I want you to stand to your feet and give them a big round of applause and tell them as the Church of God Mountain Assembly, we appreciate them. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's tell them we love them. We appreciate them. We thank them so much 
for their work and dedication. I love you. I got a plaque for you, but, you know, I'll get it to you. I promise you. And we have a new assistant national youth director, Pastor DJ Osborne from the Tabernacle Church. And he's going to do an awesome job. And him and his wonderful wife and family, we're looking forward to working with them. We know that God's going to do something great. At this time, we're going to have Pastor Matt Brode. He's our district youth director on the Northeast Ohio District. And he's the kids pastor at the Hill Church. And I'm proud of that, and I'm proud of him. And he's going to come lead us in prayer. And then directly after prayer, we're going to go into worship if they want to come up and get ready. And let's just have church tonight. You want to have church tonight? Let's worship the Lord. Pastor Matt. Praise the Lord. How many know that our young people need prayer today? Amen. Amen. Our young people need so much prayer, and this being youth night tonight, I just believe, you know, that was a great sermon we heard this morning Pastor Ellis gave about that roaring lion. Our young people today are hearing a lot of the wrong lion roaring. They're hearing that devil roaring in their ears, telling them, you know, that it's all right for addiction, that it's all right for all these things of the world. And I believe that this week, as he preached, you know, we need to take that roar of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that great lion, back home with us. And we need to be in prayer for our young people because our young people need it more than ever. They're telling them that all these things are just a sickness. They're telling them that depression is just a sickness, that, you know, anxiety is a sickness, and they're just wanting to give them pills and pills. But how many know that they need Jesus tonight? Amen. They need Jesus. Amen. On top of our young people, if anybody here tonight has a special need in their hearts, would you just uh, stand tonight as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer and just stand if you have a special need in the house tonight. We're believing that God can heal. We're believing that God can can take care of those needs that God can bring those family members amen that aren't in church we he can deliver them amen deliver them from drugs deliver them from alcohol deliver them from all the things that the world has grasped on them amen amen Hallelujah, Lord. We just give you all the glory. We give you all the praise tonight, Lord. Lord, we just pray, God, tonight, Lord, that you just touch our young people, Father God, not only the young people of the Church of God, not assembly, but the young people all over this world, God. Lord, help us to be a light to them, God. Lord, to go out to the highways and the hedges, God, and to be a light to them, Lord. Lord, and show them your love. Show them your compassion, Lord. Lord, show them the way, Father God. Lord, and bring them, Father God, to the house of the Lord. Lord, I pray, Father God, for our young people, Lord, Lord, that are going through depression, they're going through anxiety, Lord. Lord, I pray that the blood of Jesus tonight would just reach to them, Lord, Lord, and break this bondage that has them bound up, Lord. Lord, that you would set a new generation on fire, Lord. Ignite a new generation, God, of our future pastors and our future worship leaders and our future, Father God, leaders of this great organization, Lord. Lord, I pray tonight, God, for those that are sick in body. I pray tonight, God, for those that are dealing with issues in their homes, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, the blood of Jesus be upon every situation tonight. Lord, we just pray for this preacher as he comes tonight, God, that you just give him clarity of thought and clarity of speech, Lord. Lord, in your presence would be filled in the place tonight. In your precious heavenly name, everybody said amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let us worship the Lord this evening. How many's come to get a touch from the Lord tonight? Oh, come on. How many's come expecting a touch from the Lord tonight? Don't leave here the same way you came. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pulling on joy from heaven's reason. I stored up enough for every winter. Say the joy of the Lord tonight. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Come on.
you thankful for the joy of the Lord tonight, won't you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise in this house? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. to the worried and this goes out to the stressed sorting out a million thoughts running through your head to everyone that's waiting for better days ahead you get tired and frustrated leaving words unsaid but please don't hold your breath. Come on, church, and just breathe. It's a miracle we can breathe. This power.
your hands up tonight. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, I will bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Come on, and all. Come on, if you love him tonight, let the Basana worship in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, has God been good to you? Aren't you glad that he's never failed you in a battle? Amen, and he never will fail you in a battle. Amen, he's never lost tonight.
Come on, give him praise. Come on, just take about 30 seconds and praise him. Come on, he's never lost a battle. He's never lost a battle. Come on now. Never lost a battle to cancer. He's never lost a battle to sugar diabetes. He's never lost a battle to a family situation. He's never lost a battle to church trouble. He's undefeated. He's undisputed. He's unmatched. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad he's never lost a battle. Oh, I'm on the winning side. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, he's not going to lose. He's not going to lose. He's not going to lose. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Got a quick announcement. I want to say that we have senior camp coming up. Senior camp is, um, somebody said, how old do you have to be to go to senior camp? Uh, well, we uh, they tried to say it was 40 and up, but then the 30s started moving in and found out all that good cooking and food. But we're, we're having it August 31st. That's on a Wednesday and then Thursday and Friday. And then we're leaving uh, on that Saturday. But on uh, uh, Wednesday night, Pastor Don White's going to be preaching and his church is going to be with us. And we're excited about that. We've got different singing groups and things coming. We've got an Amish trip we're going to have, just good food and time. And then uh, Sister uh, Inese Lewis from Aspenwall will be preaching on the morning. And then on Thursday and Thursday night, uh, Reverend Wayne Halcom is going to be preaching. And then Friday morning, Pastor John Kiefer and Pastor Wayne Eisen on Friday night. Today's Pastor Wayne's 75th birthday today. It's his birthday, 75 years of... Come on, somebody tell him happy birthday, Pastor Wayne. Pastor Wayne, happy birthday. And uh, we got some good cooks and some good times we're going to have. We got flyers. I want you to come. It's cheap. It's cheap, cheap. $35 a person. That includes your stay and your food. And we'll make room for you. We want you to come. Last year, we had 61 or 62 at senior camp. And our goal this year is to have 100 at camp this year. And I want you to come. Some come up for the night services and a lot stay for the day. And we want to do that. And uh, we're thankful for that. Um, one of the greatest things, as most of you know, this is my second time as the National Youth Director. If you would have told me uh, four or five years ago that this would have happened, I would have told you you was crazy. But uh, the Lord laid it on my heart, and we've done that. But one of my favorite things to do uh, as National Youth Director, my dad and my grandfather put it in me to always give honor where honor is due. Amen? Amen. And the ones that's helped. And we have a Camp Hall of Fame. And uh, we are so thankful that we're going to induct two people into the Camp Hall of Fame. People don't do it for honor, but when they do it, you ought to give them honor. Amen? Somebody should have said amen right there. And we have two that we're inducting into the uh, Hall of Fame. And this first person, she's a wonderful woman of God. I have highly respect for her. I've seen her for the last probably 17 or 18 years as a counselor and a dedicated worker. She is more than a help to every national youth director that she has been there. She's a godly woman, and I appreciate her heart and her desire for the camp. And she's worked years and years since she was younger. She's still young, but since she was younger. And I want to give her double honor tonight. And for this year, in 2022, I want to induct into the Camp Hall of Fame none other than Stephanie Gauntz Fryman. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Stephanie, come on, let's stand up. Give her a hand. Stand up, stand up. 
Come on, you can do better than that. Oh, yeah. I appreciate Sister Stephanie and her work that she does. This next Hall of Fame that I want to give out, he's a former national youth director. He has one of the biggest hearts I've ever known of, and I appreciate him so much. He's a man of God. He loves the youth department. He's worked as the assistant national youth director. He's worked as a national youth director. And you'll not find a camp that he's not at and that he don't support and that he's not behind. And I want to give double honor tonight to this man of God. One of the closest friends I have in my life is none other than Pastor Douglas Walden. Let's give him a hand as he comes. Pastor Doug. Come on, let's give them both a wonderful hand. We get a picture. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. At this time, we're going to receive this evening's offering. I don't have time tonight to go through everything that we have tried to accomplish at the campgrounds this year, but we've done our very best to put about three or four years work into one year. We've totally transformed our tabernacle, uh, new carpet. We got rid of those um, pews that have been good to us. I mean, they were good to us. They were in the old tabernacle on the, camp, on the campgrounds in Jellico, on the old campground meeting place. And they took them to the camp. We've had them for years. And uh, they were wearing down, breaking down. One night we was having church and the whole pew collapsed to the side. And we wanted to do that. And we got chairs, beautiful chairs, 350 beautiful chairs on the campgrounds. And they were all paid for. From the Southern Rally, we paid for all of those with senior camp in the Southern Rally. We'd done 350 chairs, over $15,000 that we'd done for that. And then we done new carpet. We tore the carpet up. Brother John Hoover and Sister Tammy ripped all that carpet out. And we got carpet squares. And it with labor and everything tearing out, putting down glue and hiring somebody to come help us do that. And all of that was around thirteen dollars or $14,000. And we raised almost all of that at the Northern National Youth Rally this year. And I appreciate the Lord for that. Then we got new lights. The Hill Church done the stage, put new uh, stage lights on there, paid for the stage to be repaired, put new, uh, like a ship lap on the front of the altar. We extended the stage up in the front, on and on and on. We got a new roof on the Aspenwall dorm, all the dorms. Pastor, Pat, uh, Pastor Patrick and his team come, and they painted the tabernacle, um, the, um, not the tabernacle, the inside of the tabernacle they did. And then we painted the cafeteria. We dedicated the cafeteria to Sister Tammy Hoover this year. And that was a wonderful thing. We painted the uh, Goshen dorm. We painted uh, the Aspenwall dorm. We painted the Rittman dorm. We painted the Five Mile dorm. We painted the Indiana dorm. Brother Daryl and Brother um, Pastor Don White and Pastor Daryl put new showers in the Indiana dorm. We put 200, over 200 tons of rock on the campgrounds, put a new park parking lot in front. I could go on and on and on. The VIP rooms. I walked into VIP room number one. They're not very VIP, but that's what we call them because we want to act like we're fancy. We walked in and the roof had caved in and we had seen it and the mold was so bad that when you put your finger, we have a picture of it, in room number one, it went all the way to your knuckle a black mold. Black mold. We ripped all of it out, put new bathrooms in all five VIP rooms. There's six. The nurse's station was already done. They put it in the drywall. Brother Bill Barry and his team come up and done that. We finished in the Monroe dorm. The bathrooms there took it out, put purple board in like a green board so the mold, the smell is gone in there. We, we just on and on and on and on. I could tell you the flower beds on the front. Uh, this year, my brother-in-law, uh, Jacob Pittman, he called me and said, I want to do something for the camp. And I said, what do you want to do, Jacob? He's such a blessing to us. I appreciate he's watching tonight. I appreciate him so much. Pray for him. He had surgery on his back. 
and was in a bad car accident. And then after he was in that car accident the other day, they found out that it didn't fuse together again and they're going to have to redo the surgery. He drove all the way from Louisiana, come up down from Louisiana and installed brand new fountain machine drinks, slushy machines for our, for our, uh, our, our camp in the concession stand. He bought them paid for them, installed them, brought all the drinks for us to do, and then left and gave me a $2,000 check for the campgrounds this year. Man, that was a blessing. That was a blessing. He done that. I could go on. We, we've done so much work, tried to do, and it just the blessings of the Lord. But it takes money. How many knows it takes money? It takes finances. Last year, we were trying to calculate it. I think we had around 37 or 38 pledges of $1,000 or $500. And I believe there was 13 or 14 of them that was actually turned in from the assembly. We really need your help this year. But we need you when you to pledge it, to please give it, to please do it. Because these children are worth it. If you could have seen those around 400 kids that was on the campgrounds this year pouring out their heart to the Lord being filled with the Holy Ghost, being saved, shouting, worshiping. I'm telling you, Friday night at Young Adult Camp, I can't explain it. The power of God came in that place so strong. We tried to end two or three times, and it was just unbelievable. It was, it was a move like I have never felt before. It was a God, it was a God thing. But it's because of you. It's because you invested into it. We got a brand new, another thing I mentioned, we got a brand new sign on the campground with LED lights on the inside. When you pull in now, you can see it. It's all lit up with the new CGMA logo on it. I mean, we go on new pump in the, in the uh, sewer system and on and on and on. God has been good. But the reason I wanted to do so much the first year is to let you know that we're going to do what we said we're going to do with the money that you give, the seeds that you sow. You say, well, I'm not putting it in a kid. I'm putting it in a, in, a, in a toilet or a door or a wall. No, you're not. You're investing into a life that can be changed forever. My grandpa Walden, when he was preaching one night at our church, the second to his last sermon, he said, I've tried to do everything I can to get the biggest welcoming party when I die and go to heaven so they can welcome me there to invest into people's lives and to do it. We do this every year, but I need your help this year. I need churches. I need churches that will help us out with a $1,000 pledge. We need, listen, we need a big offering this year. We're adding on to the concession stand. We're putting a big picnic shelter out almost 30 feet. And then we're going to put a stairway down all the way down to the pond that we have. And we're going to have a at the bottom of the pond there, we're going to have a big deck that goes around on both sides where they can fish off of it and do it. So it'll be safer for the steps to go down, more access. Because when you have, like we did, over 200 kids at kids camp and you try to feed them, you can't fit them all in the cafeteria. You need more room to come out and put them out there. And that's going to help us extend that out to do it. I can tell you of other projects that we're doing. We're putting a sprinkler pad out there. There's multiple things that we're going to upgrade and do this year. I'm not, pull, I'm not putting my foot off the gas and taking it easy. We're going to do the best we can to make the biggest impact that we can. I need your help tonight. I need churches. I need individuals. I need your help. We could beg all night and it'll probably get the same result. I'm not going to do it. If your church is able within the next 30 days or if you could do it down here that'd be great but in the next 30 days and the next 30 days to help us to say Pastor Walden I'll be able to help with a thousand dollars would there be any that would help me out today the Life Church from Avon Park Florida uh, Northtown Church in Sydney Georgetown uh, the New Life Church in Ferguson we writing them you putting them down for me Pastor Scott Landis at the Tabernacle Church Pastor Mike Moore at the Remnant Church. I've seen another hand. Pastor Wayne Eisen from the Metamora Church. Thank you. 2,000. Abe, thank you for the Abundant Life Church in Newcastle, Indiana. Praise God. Compassion Church, Toledo. Thank you so much, Pastor Chaz. 
Is there anybody else that can help us out with $1,000? Aspenwall, thank you. Thank you for spending our money, Jalen. Thank you, Aspenwall. I'm glad you did it. The Hill Church, $1,000. Fondy, Kentucky, $1,000. Thank you so much. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? We desperately need your help. Brother Ronnie, thank you so much. Hey, that's my buddy. He built our first sign when I was in from scratch and paid for it, about $14,000. I appreciate that, Brother Ronnie, for your work and dedication. He walked on the campgrounds with me the other day, and he said, this don't even look like the same place. I said, amen, that's right. Anybody else? Anybody else? $1,000, I appreciate it. What about five hundred? dollars Is there some that can say we couldn't do 1000 but our church or individual do 500 would there be any? Hey, thank you. Pastor Jasper Walden, La Follette Church of God, West Walden Street, Church of God. Amen. 500. Amen. Brother Glenn, thank you, Lois. Thank you so much. She's paying for it, right? Okay. Sounds good to me. Pastor Ken Ellis. I was in a tight spot, and I asked Pastor Ken the other day. I said, I need your help. And he sent it. I appreciate that, Pastor Ellis. $500. Anybody else? Don't want to miss nobody. Pastor Nick Hill, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Who am I missing? 500. Brother Woody Gilbert, thank you. Thank you. Amen. Pastor Bobby Baum, amen. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Harriman, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Courts of praise. Pastor Donnie Hill. Would there be another? We got time. Brother Dean Strong, thank you so much, Dean. I appreciate it. Amen. Brother Paul Dobson, $500. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Paul. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? $500. We can do that. What if you're here tonight? Thank you, thank you, Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry just retired the other day, and that means he can be at camp more. I may make him head counselor next year. <laughs> First time I remember meeting Pastor Jerry Grubbs. You, anybody knows Pastor Jerry? He's always wearing black pants most of the time in a white shirt and I had just come out sliding in the mud as a teenager and there with that beautiful white hair and white shirt crisp sister Lorinda dresses him good I came up and hugged him as good as I can I thought he was going to kill me you know what he did he said come on in here let me make you a sandwich let me get you some peanut butter fudge I know what he was thinking come here I want to I appreciate that, Pastor Jerry Grubbs. Anybody else? I don't want to miss it. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Deke. Thank you so much from Middlesboro there. Thank you. Anybody else? Don't want to. All right. What if you're here and you say, Pastor John, I can give $100 tonight. Can you stand? If you can help us with $100 from yourself or from a youth group or individual, and you'll say, me and Sister Angie's going to do that. But Jay Walden. Dad, thank you so much. But Lambert, thank you so much. They're standing up all over. All over. Thank you. If you can do that, just stand up and help us out here. $100. Thank you. Thank you. Two right there. Amen. Connie's spending Dennis's money. I like that. Amen. Thank you. How many we got? When you're standing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 31, 32, 32. Thank you so much. I appreciate it with all my heart. We're going to have the ushers come at this time. We ask that you give. If you can give that offering tonight, I greatly appreciate it. If not, make sure you send it in. They'll give you a receipt. You can have tax exemption from it. Uh, tax write-off, they'll send it for you. You can give online. You can give online. If you go to MyCGMA, you can give online. You can go to MyCGMA.com and go down to the youth, and you can give it on. If you have church and want to give online, you're welcome to do that. Or send it in, send it in. We can, we can do that. Let's, let's get ready to pray. Father, I love you today, and I thank you that you're able to help us here tonight. God, you know we need it. We need a miracle offering tonight. God, we need a blessing. The winter months are sometimes hard, but God, we know there's nothing too hard for you to do. Lord, we ask that you touch every church that is investing tonight, every individual that is, that is investing tonight, every youth group that's investing. Lord, I pray that that seed will come back to them sevenfold 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We ask that you give to the Lord as God has blessed you. Come on, let us stand up tonight. Come on, can we get to our feet? We come to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. testimony tonight I needed rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan now you call me a citizen of them when I was broken you were my healing now your love is the end I have a future I have a future my eyes are open you call my name. sing it tonight we've been redeemed hallelujah i needed rescue my sin was heavy but chains break at the weight of your glory i needed shelter i was an orphan now you call me a citizen come on when i when i was broken you were my healing now your love is the You call my name. We're just going to sing that bridge just one more time. Won't you sing it from your heart? Come on. 
I needed rescue, my sin was heavy, but change break out the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a sinner. When I was broken, when I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is me. I have a future, I have a future, my eyes are open, cause when you call my name. Come on, somebody, won't you just bless the Lord for a moment tonight? Come on, just lift up the name of Jesus. God, you've been good to me. Oh, hallelujah. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy. But chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. But you called me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the end and I'm free. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name. heavy but change break at the weight of your glory I was an orphan I was an orphan now you call me a citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing glorious day you call my name then I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day hallelujah come on come on come on come on somebody praise him come on somebody praise him you was in a grave of darkness and sin, had no way out, but the Lord had been good to you. Aren't you glad for it? Did he bring you out of darkness tonight? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad. 
that he didn't keep me where he found me. Aren't you glad for that, that the Lord didn't keep you where he found you? But he brought you out of the miry clay. And I'm thankful for that. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. We're going. we got one more song, and then our bishop is going to come and introduce one of my favorite preachers and wonderful friend. I really mean that. I'm so glad for you to be able to hear this man of God that's coming to preach tonight. But before he does, I want to say uh, my daughter's getting ready to sing. You can use this, but I want to say that I appreciate my family for working so hard. How many knows that you need your family to work with you? And uh, my wife and my children are a wonderful help to me. And I appreciate them for all their dedication and work and trips to the camp and doing everything. They're wonderful to me. And I couldn't do what we do at our church or anywhere if it wasn't for them. I'm proud of my daughters. Every one of my daughters want to serve the Lord. They want to worship the Lord. They want to praise the Lord. They're respectful. And I appreciate that. And the Lord, the Lord puts his hand on that. And I believe that. And I, and I appreciate them so much. And I've asked Leah to sing this song. And then our bishop's going to come and introduce tonight's speaker. Hallelujah. I'm blessed to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Our God deserves the highest praise. This song simply says, give me Jesus, because without him, there would be no us. God is our heart, our heart's desires. And Jesus, he sent his only son just for us, and yet we still push his desire away. God, I desire you with everything that I am, with everything that I have. God, I want to see you move in this generation. Last night was such a blessing because you got to see the anointing flow from one generation to the next, to the next. And I ask that God flow through every generation that we have in this building today. Because one generation is not better than the other, but simply working together brings God's presence in.
to your neighbor and say all I want is Jesus turn to your other neighbor and say all I need is Jesus amen Leah has some CDs in the back if you'd like to buy one amen I tell you I don't know about you but I'm glad I'm at the 115th assembly CGMA. Hallelujah. There's just something in the atmosphere this year. I said there's just something in the atmosphere this year that is fresh. Hallelujah. Now, we had a great assembly last year, but that, I mean, I already spent all of that. Amen. I needed something fresh. Hallelujah. So, if I have it in my mind, that I need something fresh. And then I listen to the song, You Can Have All This World, but give me Jesus. Hallelujah. He, in the matter of fact, the Bible said, He is new every day. Hallelujah. What a great, amen. How proud I am of my family. God's been good to us. We have come in. Amen. Bringing the word tonight. Reverend Bobby Bond spent four years in active duty serving our country, the United States and the Marine Corps. Could we just honor him for that? Could we honor all of our veterans for that? Hallelujah. The Church of God Mountain Assembly salutes our veterans. Amen. We was going to. Already had a program prepared yesterday. But Brother Charles Vance was in the hospital having a lung operation and he could not come. Amen. Reverend Bobby has a bachelor's degree in psychology and will complete his master's degree in organizational leadership this fall. Reverend Bobby became a licensed minister in the Church of God Mountain Assembly in 2007. He was ordained six years ago. He presently serves this organization as the Michigan District Overseer and also as the pastor of that great church, Haven in Trenton, Michigan. He and his wife, Marella, are proud parents of four children, Braley, Ira, Ezekiel, and the newborn. And when I say newborn, he arrived on Saturday, am I right? Oh, two weeks ago. A newborn. Matter of fact, Brother Zach Petrie had a newborn 
She arrived on Sunday. Amen. After church. The day after his birthday, he was depressed. But Amen. And the newborn's name is Joseph. Could you join me and welcome Pastor Bobby Bond for the word tonight? Could you do that? Amen. Let's give the Lord glory and honor in this place tonight, can we? Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Come on. Just for a moment, come on, lift your hands all over the place tonight. He's good. How can you follow singing like that? Just give me Jesus. Just give me Jesus. I don't need anything else. I don't want anything else. Listen to me tonight. I, I, I don't have any pedigree in this. I just got to tell this and testify tonight. I'm a first generation preacher. We've heard all week long so far about third generation preachers. I have no godly heritage in my family. And, and I needed Jesus. I needed Jesus. So proud to have my best friend here with me tonight, Pastor Garrett Suggs. And he can testify to everything that I'm about to tell you because he's known me for over 20 years. And if you would have asked me 15, 16 years ago, uh, if I'd be standing in front of a congregation of church people preaching the word of God as, uh, as a young man who was addicted to multiple different kinds of drugs, amen, uh, who was uh, out drinking four or five nights a week coming home drunk already before I even had a driver's license, amen, a uh, high school dropout, amen, uh, a depressed, a self-mutilator. I used to stab a knife into my arm and I would rip my flesh open. Scars so big that you can feel them through my suit coat tonight. If you were to touch my arm, my best friend can vouch for this. And I, and I needed Jesus, but I was trying to plug everything else in everywhere that I could to make myself feel better, amen. Anything that I could do to fill the gap, to fill the void, and I started to pray, not even having any sense or concept of God, the Bible, or who God is. But let me tell you what tonight, that God is just that powerful that I didn't even need to hear a word. I didn't even need to run into a preacher. But the Spirit, amen, was beginning to do a work in my life as I began to pray, not even knowing what I was praying, who I was praying to, or the words that I was saying, amen. And I started to pray this prayer. Lord, why don't you just let me die? Why don't you just let me die? Around about that time, I met my best friend and uh, uh, his papa, Pastor Ray DeLong, pastor at the church in Belleville. Amen. My mentor, I miss him dearly. And uh, I, I showed up to the church, long black hair down to my shoulders. Amen. Wearing funky colored shoes. Amen. I think I had them painted like a zebra. White Chuck Taylor Converse shoes painted like a zebra. Uh, wearing a Motley Crue band t-shirt. I know you all sanctified people don't know who Motley Crue is. Amen. And, and I walked myself in and I sat down right in the very front row because Pastor DeLong was the only person I knew. Listen, this is how green I was. Some lady went out in the spirit and I started nudging people and I said, aren't they going to call an ambulance for this lady? I had no idea what was happening, no idea what was going on. And after several weeks of attending church and hearing the word of the Lord, amen, I made my way to the altar. And I didn't realize that that prayer that I had been praying, Lord, let me die that the Lord would answer it in such a glorious and marvelous way. And that young man that I was died that day, made me new, washed me clean, did a work that no man could do. Hallelujah. I said did a work that no man could do. Made whole what no bottle could make whole. Made whole what no drug could make whole 
delivered instantly from things that psychologists and doctors and, and people of high esteem will tell you that you just have to suffer with and live with for the rest of your life. But I'm here to tell you today that when they say it's yours and you own it, I'm here to say that God says something different. Amen. And he made the difference for me. Hallelujah. And so when I hear that song, just give me Jesus. That was all I needed. That was all I needed. It made the difference. Give him a hand of praise tonight, would you? He's so good. So good. Uh, I'm, I'm really beyond words at the invitation to speak at a general assembly. Uh, matter of fact, Pastor John will tell you, I, I asked him, I said, are you sure? <laughs> uh, I, I'm not some great orator. I don't consider myself to be any uh, conference speaker, a great revivalist. But I'm thankful and honored and humbled at the opportunity to stand before such a great and wonderful organization as the Church of God Mountain Assembly. I'm thankful for it. I love it. It's the only thing that I've known, amen. And I'm glad it was the first church that I stumbled into. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. And I've been here ever since. And you know, you can, uh, you can complain about it. You can have your druthers about it. But it's kind of like being an American, even for all of her failures and shortcomings. I don't see any of you getting up running out to leave. Amen. So no matter what you like or what you don't like, amen, this is a good organization. And I'm proud to belong to it. Amen. And uh, I give honor tonight to all of our officials uh, the incoming and the outgoing, all of these great men uh, of God. I'm, I'm thankful to be under such leadership, appreciate them, appreciate how they've invested into my life and my ministry, and I can't thank them enough, and I think you ought to give them a hand tonight. We give them honor tonight, all of the uh, incoming and the outgoing officials. I love them and appreciate them. And uh, I, I got to say, Pastor John hit on it, but uh, I love this man to death, and I want to recognize him from my district, Elder Jerry Grubbs, just retiring after over 30 years of faithfully serving the church and pastoring there in Lincoln Park. And I appreciate him and love him so much. And all the Michigan folk we got here, all the Michigan folks, stand up from the Michigan district, amen. This is the first time in a long time we've had this many Michigan people be able to make it down to camp meeting. And I'm proud. I uh, got some from my church here tonight and others from the district. And I'm proud to have them here tonight. And I honor my wife here tonight who almost two weeks ago gave birth to our fourth and last <laughs> child. And, uh, and uh, she's just as good as they come. And I'm solely convinced that if anybody ever wants me around that it's only because of her. And uh, she's been a wonderful help meet, a wonderful first lady. You'll never meet another uh, more gracious and elegant lady uh, than my wife. And I love her to death and appreciate her and our children. And that she made the effort to be here, to be able to hear me preach uh, tonight when she could uh, very well entitledly be at home resting still. Amen. So I love her and appreciate you. Uh, could you give her a hand tonight? I love you, honey. I appreciate you so very much and no more kids all right amen continuing with the theme tonight out of the book of acts if you have a bible with you tonight open to chapter number two and we'll begin in verse number one and when you get there go ahead and stand and say amen hallelujah acts chapter number two uh, uh, you all pray for me tonight my strength in the lord and that he just used me and we'll have a good time in the Lord in this place tonight, all right? If you're there, holler amen. amen. All right, let's look at this together. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all of the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. 
And now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, uh, Pamphylia and Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Help me pray tonight. If you would, Lord, we come before you. Your word is already anointed, Father, but we're standing here tonight as just a bag of dirt, Lord. Use us, fashion us in your hand. Amen. You're the potter and we are the clay, just a vessel, a tool, and an instrument to be used by you. And we yield ourselves to you now, Father. And I ask, Lord, that you give me clarity of thought and speech and let your word go forth in demonstration and power of the sweet Holy Ghost, in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray tonight, amen and amen. Give the Lord one more hand as you're seated tonight, hallelujah. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. Uh, in so many years, for many of us reading this text from the lens of the full gospel, believing church and body, the fact is clear that this text, this scripture, it is our Alamo. This is the text where we take our stand to defend the biggest parts of our beliefs on what the moving of and the baptism of the Holy Ghost is. But I, I want to look at it a little bit differently tonight, amen, and in a different light, not uh, uh, adding anything to to it, not taking anything away from it, but contextually and exegetically taking another look at what's taking place here for a more full and bigger picture of what the work of the Holy Ghost is really doing, amen, not just in his mere presence alone, amen, but in the work that he is doing. Understand tonight that in the text that by the time the Holy Ghost had come, they were already in unity, amen, they were already in a one mind and one accord uh, for the Holy Ghost to come. It wasn't the Holy Ghost that brought the unity necessarily, but they had to labor and travail in prayer to be able to come into that unity that would allow the moving of the Holy Ghost to happen. Amen. The unity it had to exist for the moving of the Spirit to come and to move on them and to fill their mouth. Amen. But past amen that it has to be noted that in the continuous of the moving of the Holy Ghost on that day that there was something miraculous that was taking place in the language of the people who were there on that day amen the Bible says cloven tongues as a fire amen a people speaking as the spirit was giving the utterance cloven or the Greek word deemerizio meaning to cut into pieces to divide something or to distribute in the tongues in the Greek glossé simply meaning a dialect or a language that is distinct from others. Uh, the tongue here is miraculous, no doubt, amen. Uh, but either way that you look at it, it's at least known by one party, either the speaker, the listener, but through his power it becomes known to all, amen. Regardless of how you look at it tonight, the work of the Holy Ghost in this moment is much more to the growing of the church than just the prayer language of speaking in tongues or the outward sign of the baptism that we have but it is a power that is meant to break every stronghold but it is a power that is meant to tear down every barrier it's a power that was meant to be a witness to and a testimony of the fulfilling of the prayer of the son himself to the father amen Amen. saying that if I would leave you that I'll send you down another one that you wouldn't be comfortless the parakletos the one called 
to stand by your side in every adversity, in every attack, in every illness, in every sickness, in every thought of depression, in all of your fears, and in every anxiety, in anything, amen. The one called to stand by your side to lead you, guide you safely through and take you to the other side. And I would say tonight that there are many of us in this room that would need so desperately for this paracletos comforter to be by our side that it would do us good tonight that if we could enter into a mind and a heart of unity, amen, because I don't know about you and what you're living through and what you're experiencing, but if unity will bring a healing to my body, God, let me stand in agreement, but God, if unity will bring deliverance to my kids, let me stand in an agreement. God, if unity will shake the foundations of my church home and family, God, let me stand in a unity and an agreement. Somebody give him some praise in this place tonight. Yeah. But what we see at the beginning of this ministry of the Holy Ghost is the fact that during this great feast of Pentecost where many had gathered together from all of the surrounding areas, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, parts of Libya around Cyrene, and strangers of Rome and Jews, proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians. And they all said, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Amen. But then they asked the question in their amazement and astonishment, what meanest this? Amen. That really triggered my thoughts. Amen. Because the text says that they heard in their own language. If you hear in your own language, there's some sense then of an understanding. Amen. So why why would they ask, what meaneth this? Amen. In my opinion, you can agree or disagree, but I believe that this is the real ministry of the Holy Ghost, and that was to dismantle a barrier of culture that existed between the people that were present in order, amen, for them to come into that unity and agreement. What the Holy Ghost did in the continuation of the work of prayer and unity was further break down cultural barriers that existed between all of the men of the surrounding area. Can I tell you tonight that the work of the Holy Ghost isn't just so you can speak in tongues but the work of the Holy Ghost is so that any wall that would stand between you and your brother, any wall that would stand between you and the ministry, any wall amen, that would put a spirit of divisiveness in you, that that culture would be shaken, crumbled, ripped down, destroyed. Woo! Hey! They were already in unity, amen, but for the continuation of such unity, the Holy Ghost ministers in a way that breaks culture right apart, amen. When I think about young people today, I think about culture, amen. I know a lot of old timers, they didn't use the word culture for the things that were societal constructs when they grew up. But now, culture is such a popular word. Amen. But all the way back to the day of the upper room, the work of the Lord was to dismantle to disrupt, to remove any cultural barrier that existed in those men and women in that room so that when they left that room there was no divide between the task, the job that they were called to do upon leaving out the door. It wasn't just about the prayer language, amen, and I love speaking in tongues, but more than that it was about breaking down culture. Yeah. Hey, 
Can I suggest tonight that though we have some of the best preaching around, and I really feel we do, though we have some of the best teachers around, and I really feel that we do, that though we have what I consider some of the best church leaders around in this very organization, and I feel it and mean it from the bottom of my heart, talented, gifted, anointed, amen, that what we have really missed out in in this heavenly and holy unity is the fact that though we've spoken in tongues many times that in the continuation of what took place we've not quite yet allowed it to break the cultural barriers that exist within our own bodies and I'm here to just preach to an assembly tonight to say that if we would strive together in prayer come into a unity come into an agreement amen speak in tongues yes but past that allow the continuation of the work of the Holy Ghost to dismantle every culture that we've put up in the church and bring it down. Hallelujah. Problem is we're speaking different languages. Problem is we're speaking different languages. You say, what do you mean? I, preacher, I, I speak English. I'm not talking about what you say. I'm talking about what you do. We're talking two different things. Amen. And for the continuation of the unity, we must allow the work of the Holy Ghost that fired up our tongues to fire up our hearts and break it all down. Hey, because you know what? I don't like a lot of the sentiment going around kingdom culture, church culture. Culture ain't got no business in the church of God. Somebody don't like that. I love church culture. Not me. Not me. The Holy Ghost came to break culture. Amen. It's never meant to exist in the first place. You know why? Because there's a world of people already that are divided by class. Divided by rich and poor. Divided by black and white. Divided by male and female. Divided by fat and skinny, amen. I'm on the wrong side of that line, amen. Divided by uh, all of these different things. Uh, You know why? Because society, amen, uh, creates constructs uh, that lead to culture. And culture leads to barriers. And barriers ain't got no place in God's church. Hey. And while it's healthy to some degree to be different and distinct and have these differences that we celebrate, they should never become barriers and walls that take place and come up in our churches, in our congregations, in our personal lives, in our work lives. You want to start seeing a move of God, start ripping down cultural barriers. Yeah. The gospel of Christ makes men and women all equitable at the foot of the cross. Amen. Pentecost and the Holy Ghost. Amen. What many great commentators have actually called a reversal of Babel where God purposefully puts cultural barrier of language in place because regardless of how you view the text, there was a unity in place that was so strong but their hearts were so wrong that God comes down and he said these people are so together that what they purposed in their hard to do, they could do it. I need to confuse their language. I need to confuse their culture. I need to put something in here to stop them. Pentecost, the reversal of Babel, amen, where that plug comes out and the language is heard, amen. Everybody hearing in their own native tongue the good and the marvelous works of God, amen. And you tell me tonight that culture's got a place in the church. I say get rid of it, rip it down, tear it apart, and let the floodgates of heaven open and the Holy Ghost move. We have to. We must. It's essential. It's imperative. It's critical. It's a command that the continuation of the work of the Spirit eradicate culture from your mind, your heart, and this church body. Hey, I want to suggest tonight that the church, His church, it's not a place where culture has a place. There ain't no black church. Ain't no white church. Ain't no Hispanic church. There's no old church. 
There ain't no young church. <laughs> but we are one church. Come on, somebody. We are one church. Blood-bought church. And empowered by one spirit church. A worshiping one savior church. A worshiping one father church existing trinitarily as the Godhead. That's the church. Yeah. But these are all constructs of culture that the Holy Ghost in his ministry to bring unity was working through men and women of God to break so that the gospel could be preached in a marvelous and a powerful fashion. Amen. Hallelujah. If you think, let me, if you think church was intended to be cultural, then what you're really saying to me tonight is preacher, I believe in church culture. That means that you think God is bound by periods of time. If you say to me tonight that you believe in church culture, you're telling me that you believe that God is bound to uh, areas of location. Oh, my God. If you're telling me tonight you believe in church culture, amen, then you're telling me that you believe that God is a God of uh, 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 different races and God is a God of different ages amen but I serve a God tonight that glory to him has transcended all of time Woo. I serve a God tonight that has transcended all of every region of the four corners of this world. I serve a God tonight that has transcended any societal, any cultural, any construct that the world from its foundations has put up to segregate different classes, races, and groups of people. And more popular today, the ones that the church themselves have put up in their own body. I'm telling you tonight, God is not a God of culture. God is a God of his people and what he wants for his people is an existing and a dwelling and a unity. Why? Not just for the benefit of your soul being saved but past that once you do that somebody else could be reached with the gospel. Hey. When I walked into that church it was a culture shock for them old people. Let's be real. We'll have to dig out some pictures. <laughs> Could you imagine 16, maybe 15 still, year old me walking into an old holiness church? All elderly people at that time, long black hair, probably reeking like booze and weed, looking all crazy. And I marched right up and I sat on the front row. <laughs> you do that in the church today and you'll have an usher grab you by the arm. <laughs> He'll move you back. That was a culture shock. That was a culture shock. Amen. And God bless my mentor, Pastor Ray Long. I tell you what, he, I, I say this all the time. He might not have been one that could, could preach the way that many did, but one thing that he did was he could love people like nobody else could. And I learned that from him, that loving people the way they need to be loved will do way more to them than preaching ever will. Because people don't want to see you preach something you're not living. <laughs> right? Right? And so what he did... When I shocked the culture of that church, when I was in there, as he just knelt down around me and all he had to do was say, Bobby, Jesus loves you. Amen. And let me tell you what, the Holy Ghost took care of the rest. Amen. Because I came in the next weekend with a haircut and dress clothes and got welcomed as a first-time visitor after I'd been attending there for months already. Culture shock. Culture shock. Amen. Amen. I wonder tonight what we, some of us would do if the Lord said, I'm going to shock the culture of that church, amen. I, I'm going to send them the dope addict. I'm going to send them the crazy in their mind. I'm going to send the Gardenian maniac their way. I'm going to send the ones depressed that, that can't get up out of the bed, crying the blues day in and day out and see how you can do with them. And I'm going to tell you what, you ain't never going to get anywhere with them unless you let culture break and crumble. I, I, I don't preach long, I promise. 
I really don't. You can ask my church, but I feel the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, church is not a culture. Church is not a culture, but the real church, the body of Christ. And Christ has not preferred any people over any different span of time or over another. And yet he remains the same, unchanged, always being who he said he would be and always doing what he said that he would do irrespective of time, irrespective of locality, irrespective of economic status, not respecter of race, amen. Just Jesus being Jesus like he said that he would do. And I'm telling you, if you want to live by it and preach it, then dismantle the culture that exists that divides. Uh, the Holy Ghost didn't do the work that he did thousands of years ago so that thousands of years later we could be proud as a Pentecostal organization to just say that we still believe in speaking in tongues. <laughs> but he did it so that we could say that the baptism and the power uh, is there, uh, that we're an organization that doesn't allow barriers of culture to keep us divided and in status and as old and young and as rich and poor and status and no status and big church and little church, but as one body unified together, igniting, uniting, and being the light of all the world over. Yeah. You see, the Holy Ghost did not change the culture of that room. Some people say you need to just change how you look at things. Just change how you view the young people. Just change how you view the older people. Just change how you view, uh, view uh, this style and change how you view that preference or this preference, amen. But the Holy Ghost didn't change their culture. He got rid of it. Yeah. He broke it. Oh, help me preach tonight, amen. Meaning non-existent anymore, amen. Not a remnant of it left, amen, that some were holding on to like an old lady on the bus in New York clutching her pearls, amen, but got rid of it, amen, and completely disrupted it, amen. If the church today struggles and fades in and out because of culture, then it ain't a church at all. It's a social movement. My first assembly and last. <laughs> That's not the church I know. Not the church that I belong to. It's not the bride that I belong to. <laughs> Help me preach. Amen. <laughs> but the church that I belong to. The bride that I belong to speaks in a way with cloven tongues as a fire uh, that rips in part and divides the things that need to be divided. Amen. As we see in the context of the scripture and that was the culture completely dismantled. So tonight I'm preaching culture keeps us apart and we get mad about the world and this cancel culture thing and how they'll disclude people. Amen. And do different things with cancel culture. But here we are in 20 22 uh, preaching the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and we embrace a cancel culture that says I'm not praising him if it's that song I'm not worshiping him if it's that style if it's that preacher I'm not going to stand if it's that preacher I'm going to show up 20 minutes late if it's that preacher I'm not going to amen him if it's that singer I'm not going to support I'm here to tell you tonight it needs to be broken it needs to come down it's a culture barrier that has no place in the church of God and I don't know about anybody else in the place tonight amen but I want to see walls fall I want to see barriers come down strongholds broken why because there's another young man like me somewhere hooked on drugs hooked on alcohol ready to give up on life and die in the unity of the Holy Ghost and the continuation of of the work changed my life. Yeah. 
Tonight on this youth night, I just got to preach a little bit of a horse message. Amen. Not the pale horse, but the dead horse. The one we got to beat over and over and over again. Am I lying or dying? Where it says this culture of age is going to keep me in my seat if the elder are up there singing old songs. I know this has been said a million times, but I I really feel i got to say it again. A, A culture that says if them young people are singing some of that new stuff, I'm going to sit here with my arms folded. That's cultural construct. And it don't belong in the church. It don't belong in the church. Because listen to me, and I got my church here tonight. And maybe I should have prefaced this message with that. I got a red back hymnal as a 35-year-old pastor in the back of every chair that I got at my church. And every Sunday morning and every Sunday night and every Wednesday night, Sister Susan, don't we? We open that book and we sing all of the old songs. Amen. We might do one new song maybe once or twice a month. Amen. And you know what the beauty of it is, though? That I've created an atmosphere in the church through the unction of the Holy Ghost that lets my people know that if it's God, Him glorified, crucified, resurrected, amen, as Savior, that it doesn't matter the style, it doesn't matter, amen, the preference that we can worship the Lord together as old and as young. And when we do, amen, things begin to happen. When we do, there's a shifting in the atmosphere. When we do, amen, strongholds of culture they come crumbling down you ought to give them some praise but we speak different languages but we're speaking different languages let me tell you tonight I love all different styles of music I love all different styles of preaching I love every bit of it. My best friend, Pastor Garrett, over here, I'm so proud of him. Pastors a church full of young people. I pastor a church full of old people. I only got a couple of them here tonight so we can say that. I mean that in respectfulness. You can blame culture for putting these labels on you. But you know what? When I go to his church and everybody is in jeans and ball caps and that might not be your style and I show up in a suit to preach, I'm received. Help me somebody. When he comes to my church and they come and they do new music and they're in their jeans and stuff and we're all in our suits and dresses and all that stuff, he's received. Why? Because there's something that we should know by now that is at stake, that is much bigger than any cultural difference that we have. So long as it's theologically, doctrinally sound, amen, and in modesty, amen. Let the church just be the church and let cultural walls fall down for the sake of the sanity of the elder generation and for the sake of the growth of this younger generation. Amen. I got to hurry. I, I do. But you know what has really been funny to me? Amen. Is that we'll go around as an organization, and I love it, and this is, this is just the way it is, and we'll celebrate. How well we do in foreign lands ministering the gospel of Christ. And what has to happen, Brother Jay, for that to happen? Cultural barriers cannot be there, can they? That means you go into their church and they're worshiping the way they want to worship. 
That means when you go over there in their church, they're speaking their language. That means when you go over there in their church uh, and, and they're dressed the way that they dress. Amen. So why on earth can we go celebrate the breaking of cultural divisions for the promotion of the gospel in foreign lands when right here at home in the church we can't break down culture and let the church build and grow? Hallelujah. The same Holy Ghost that breaks it over there is the same Holy Ghost that will break it right here in America. Amen. Any construct of culture, any concept of class, amen, any concept of race or creed, the same Holy Ghost that has blessed us to be the missionary church we are is the same Holy Ghost speaking tonight saying break it down once and for all. I promise I'm hurrying. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I promise my, because listen, my folks will tell you I'm not long-winded. I'm really not. 20, 30 minutes tops what you get out of me usually. But I told myself as I was praying, you need to take your time tonight. My goal is not to run you all over this church. That ain't my goal. My goal is that hopefully you don't hate me when you leave. <laughs> but that something has spoken to your heart. To say that I can be me and they can be them, but we can be together. That we can be together. Huh? But what's happened in the church with all of the good intentions, with all of the right mindset. You ever heard of doing the right thing the wrong way? Uh, You can ask my wife. I do that all the time. (laughs) Honey, I thought that's what you wanted. I didn't want it that way. But what's happened in the church with the best of intentions, listen to me, what's happened in the church with the best of intentions, amen, have created cultural constructs, amen, that now we have to chase devils off to get rid of. In other words, many things to us that have made us feel good many things to us that we've adopted in our church culture amen have become to us brazen serpents oh help me preach i'm gonna hurry i promise if you remember amen hallelujah in the book of numbers god commanded moses to make this for the people to look upon that they would be healed amen And they'd look upon the brazen serpent and healing would come over their body. Amen. Jesus himself in John's gospel says this about the brazen serpent. And he says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the son of man be lifted up that whatsoever, whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Let me ask you tonight, believe in who? The serpent pole or Jesus? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Whosoever believeth in me, not the serpent pole, amen. That thing that God sent them to heal them, they started making equitable because of the power that they perceived was in that Paul to heal them as doing the work and not God. And if you'll read later on, you'll find that Hezekiah has to go in, amen, and he has to throw that serpent pole out and down and he calls it Neheshtuin or just meaning nothing but brass. It didn't mean not one thing have nothing to do with the price of tea in China but because they equated it with With healing and a move of God, they made a cultural icon out of it and fell into idolatry and it had to be ripped down. A lot of the things that you love in the church have become cultural icons and brazen serpents and they have to be ripped down. Like I said, the first one and the last one. 
half of you don't even know me. <laughs> Never even heard of me. Who's this dude? Who's this dude? We don't care if we don't ever see him at one of these again now. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the people begin to connect the work of the Lord to this brazen serpent. And the people worship that thing. <sighs> do I need to say it or do you know what I'm saying? Do I need to say it or do you know what I'm saying? Some of the things that God's done for you, you've tied more to the experience of that thing than you have to the power of God. And for that reason, and for that reason, a cultural barrier came up. I don't know how any other example to use, uh, uh, but because you got healed during amazing grace, amen, you equate the song with the power and now the song has become a cultural icon in popular society you don't believe me you ask everybody and they know amazing grace I love that song its words have power and it has meaning but you got to recognize why they have the power and the meaning I'm not worshipping a red back book that says him no I'm worshipping the God that inspired the people to write those songs that we could be touched amen and it's no different now than it was then when that song was brand new that what is singing now in the church amen moves people amen if it's spirit filled and led amen it will change it and make a difference but I'm not worshipping Maverick City music no that's not what I'm doing but the church has allowed these brazen serpent poles to be rectified and we equate the experience of God that we had in the moment with whatever else was happening on around us whoever else was there what it looked like what it smelled like you don't believe this is my psychology a little bit coming out okay is that alright amen you walk into a place and you get a familiar smell and memories flood your mind doesn't it amen so you don't tell me tonight that when you hear a certain song it doesn't do something in you emotionally but I'm telling you what the church of God does not operate off of emotion but it operates off of the Holy Ghost hey. so we've ascribed deity and power to objects And because someone hasn't experienced the same thing in that object that we have, we start to say that's wrong. That's ungodly. That isn't what Jesus wants. That's not what he would. I know I'm starting to lose people now. Amen. But that's all right. But because I didn't have the same experience as you, I can't equate what I'm feeling to the same object that you're equating it to. Amen. I have my own things that stir in my heart, my own memories and my own emotions. And if I'm not careful to keep my emotions in check, I'll sit right there, right past a move of the Holy Ghost. And in the time, in the day that we're in now, more imperative and tumultuous than ever. I'm not willing to sit back on the move of God because it doesn't strike an emotional chord with me or it's not what I experienced or it's not what I remember, amen. But I want to give God glory so that the coming down of barriers and strongholds will allow some other young man like me, some other young woman, some other person called into the ministry that don't even know it yet to find grace, to find help, to find salvation it doesn't take a degree in education to know that I've never looked on a brazen serpent but I know enough that I can still be healed it doesn't take an educated person to say I wasn't at Azusa Street but I can still feel a revival of the Holy Ghost it doesn't take me seeing the dead raised to know and to believe that there's still a man that can do it I said it doesn't
doesn't take me seeing it and experiencing it to know that there's still a God on the throne that can do it. I'm hurrying, I promise. Maybe as they get ready even to come, give me some backing music tonight. I was scared to death to have to preach this. <laughs> Somebody in the delegation right now is saying, I wish we could have voted on Thursday morning. I love you. I worship with everybody. I do. So I'm not the problem tonight. <laughs> Let me tell you immediately, this is what the Lord put on my heart to preach. I'm sorry. And there's some people that'll say, I didn't feel the Lord in any bit of that. <laughs> and that's all right. But let me tell you, if you can only find him in a snapshot of what your familiarity is, then you're in trouble. Oh, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Listen, we ain't hypocrites. This ain't a church of hypocrites. And if we can do it across the seas... To see souls won for the kingdom of God. Then why can't we do it here tonight? Why can't we do it here now? Why can't we break down everything that's been put up in the way of what our cultural ideologies are and say that there are things that were intended for good, amen, that I've turned into my own idea and my own familiarity and my own experience. Heaven forbid, amen. No, not me. Don't let my experience cheat you out of a move of God because let me tell you tonight, no matter how ugly you're looking at me, I'm not going to let it cheat me out of my blessing. Now, I want you to stand and get ready because I won't have church. And I hope this is all right, and I hope somebody's brave enough to do it. Amen. One thing I want to do right now, you, you know what would help break cultural barriers in your churches and in your ministries? All you older pastors, before this week is over, I dare you invite one of these young pastors and preachers come preach for you and spend a day with them. I'm daring you. Ralphie, I'm double dog daring you. You young pastors, you young preachers, I double dog dare you, before this week is over, you invite one of these elder men to come and speak at your church and spend the day with them. Pastor Like, will you get with me after church and come up to Michigan? Huh? Let's do it, Pastor Like. I'll start it off. You got the invite, brother. We'll set the date. You want to break down culture. You want to break down strongholds. Just start spending some time with one another and learning from each other and growing from each other. Can I tell you tonight, I have a longing in my heart for mentorship and mentees. It's the only way that the elder man is going to be blessed in this latter day. And it's the only way that the younger man will be nurtured and instructed. We need it. We got to have it. And I'm daring you to do it tonight hey young people don't let culture make you forget the trail that's been blazed before you talk to these elders listen to them seek to understand them and start speaking the same language and break the cultural barriers amen amen yeah. uh, elders tonight let me tell you don't let your culture make you think less of the young preacher and the young minister but rather come behind and nurture them amen get behind them and seek out to pour some things into them amen some of us are longing for it some of us are hurting for it and I'm telling you I know that your life would be made complete if you would just tackle one of these young men and say I'm going to love you and support you whether you want it or not That's the truth. Hey, we have to do this it's not an option it's not 
an option. I remember a couple years ago when our bishop preached opening night of the assembly. He said, and I don't know if I'll quote it right, but something to the effect of that if we don't make changes in this way, that when the last person of that church dies, you might as well put a gravestone in front of the church too. I'm not willing to let it happen. I, I don't want to see it. Why? There's enough churches that, that are divided. There's enough churches closing up. There's enough of it going on, amen. So why fool around anymore? The time is here. The time is now. You're living now, not then. You're called for today and such a time as this. I love my childhood and wish I could go back to it, but thank God I'm an adult when I'm an adult because I couldn't survive a day in this world that these kids do without the Holy Ghost. Hey, so we have to do this. It's not an option. I want you to get ready. Amen, because I want to see this happen tonight, and I hope somebody's brave enough to do it. Amen. This is the command that we have to walk in. Amen. The prophet Jeremiah said, Hear the word of the Lord, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off, and say, He that scattered Israel will gather him and keep him as a shepherd doth his flock. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Therefore they shall come and sing in the heights of Zion and shall flow together into the goodness of the Lord for wheat and for wine and for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd and their soul shall be as watered garden and they shall not sorrow anymore at all then shall the virgin rejoice in the dance both the young men and the old together Together, for I will turn their mourning into joy and I'll comfort them and I'll make them rejoice from their sorrow what we need to see here tonight amen in this altar if you're brave enough and you believe enough in what God preached in this place tonight is I need some of you elder men to go find you a young man and I need you to just grab them by the hand and walk in unity together in this place tonight what I need to see tonight in this place is one of you young men grab the hand of one of your elder men and walk around this place tonight in the fellowship of the unity of the Holy Ghost young sisters do it with the older sister older sisters do it with the younger brother flow together in the dance flow together in the spirit flow together in the harmony of heavenly holy unity Break down every culture. Break down every stronghold. Break down everything that would stand between you and the unity of the Spirit. And now living he loved me Dying he saved me Buried he carried my sins far away Rising he justified Freed me forever One day he's coming back What a glorious day Living he loved me Dying he saved me Buried he carried my sins far away Rising, he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, what a glorious day. Oh, living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, freed me forever. One day he's coming back, what a glorious day. Well, one day when heaven was filled with his praises One day when sin was as black as could be That's when Jesus came down to be born of a virgin Dwelt among men, 
my redeemer is he living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freed me forever one day he's coming back a glorious day well one day they led him up calvary's mountain then one day they nailed him to die on the tree he was suffering anguish despised and rejected bearing our sins my redeemer is he and living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freed me forever one day he's coming back a glorious day oh living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freed me forever one day he's coming back glorious day well one day the